Is this bourbon the hottest, sexiest, and most sought after release of 2022? We're gonna find out as we review Chateau de la Bao. Welcome back to ADHD Whiskey, my name is Matt. Today we are pouring and swirling and tasting and scoring one of my most sought after releases of 2022. Today, we are reviewing the Bardstown Bourbon Company collaborative series with the French Armagnac producer, Chateau de la Baude. This is a media sample. It came from Bardstown Bourbon Company, so you know that this was free. If you're watching this video, you're probably already familiar with Bardstown Bourbon Company's first release with Chateau de la Baude. Their first collaborative release was what some sports analysts would call a home run. Everybody loved it. But poor Matt never got his hands on a bottle. Poor Matt couldn't get one. Poor Matt didn't get in on the fun. I think I've had a sample of it, but I don't own a bottle. So this isn't going to be compared to the original because guess what? Don't have one and never ever will. Before we go any further, it's time to put this whiskey's ass in a whiskey glass. America. This is a 107 proof blend of straight bourbon whiskeys finished in Chateau de la Baude Armagnac casks. This is a blend of 12 year old Kentucky bourbon and 10 year old Tennessee bourbon. Our first collaborative release with Chateau de la Baude gained legendary status, winning best in class for finished bourbons at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. For the second iteration, a custom bourbon blend accentuates the nuanced flavors from each barrel. Those two words really accentuated the nuances of that sentence, if you know what I mean. Fancy schmancy. Bold Kentucky bourbon balances oak that is busting with fiery Armagnac. Complexity, balance, and thoughtful innovation make this release one for the ages. I'm so dizzy, my bourbon spinning. I'm so dizzy, look at it go. I'm so dizzy, watching it spinning. Now I'm gonna put it in my mouth hole. I'm so dizzy. That is very pretty. That is a very pretty nose. Wow, the fruits. The fruits of their labor are shining through on the nose. Blueberries, thimbleberries. There's a bit of a tea note on here. It's like a berry tea. If that tea was also filled with ethanol and could get you slammered. Little bit of a red Charleston Chew candy bar. The one that like you stretch out and it goes and it snaps. A little hint of almond on the nose like some sort of a, a fruit preserve. There is an underlying note in here of that Armagnac, which kind of brings about a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of tartness underneath it all. Could that be the Tennessee whiskey talking or is it the Armagnac shouting back? I don't know, but I do know that I like this nose quite a bit. Let's go in for a taste of this second iteration of Chateau de la Baude. Dumb hatch. Hmm. I don't know what I was expecting. I really don't know what I was expecting. But that was something. Finish is still lingering a little bit. It was mildly oily, a mild viscosity. It did weave a bit of a spider web, but it didn't Anderson the spider silva front kick me in the face because it's only 107 proof. And I don't know whether or not I love that proof point on this or not yet. 
Never judge a book by its cover, and never judge a bourbon by its lover. And by lover, I mean first sip, second sip. The way that it makes its entrance from yonder is like love at first sight, because glorious. But then as it comes closer and closer and closer, you realize it's your cousin, and you're like... Whoa, step back there. This is a tricky one for me because I like it a lot, but also I feel like it leaves a lot to be desired. It has the bitterness of like maybe a burnt black coffee, but if you put like one of those sugar-free fruit syrups in there, like a blackberry syrup inside of a burnt black coffee, and you stirred it up and then mixed it with like 107 proof alcohol. It's kind of what that tastes like. Interestingly enough, each sip has tasted a little bit different to me. Each sip has been good and been different, but none of the sips I've taken have blown me away. None of them have taken my breath away, like COVID did a while back. It's like it's complex on a shallow level where I want it to be complex in a deep, meaningful level. Does that make sense? If not, I totally understand because it kind of sounds like nonsense to me as well. The palette bobs and weaves a little bit. It does a little bit of, it does a little shoulder roll. It's got great head movement. So I would say it's a great defensive whiskey, but when it comes to the offense, it just doesn't quite pack the punch that a fan favorite heavyweight should. Could it still win a world title? Sure. It's going to win on the scorecards and it's not going to be delivering any knockouts. If that doesn't make sense, also still get it because no idea what I'm talking about. But I still sort of mean exactly what I said. Is it up my alley? Of course. Is it up my ass? Oh yeah. Is it the greatest stuff I've ever tasted? No. Do I want a bottle of this? Yeah, I do. Will I pay $160 for it if I see one in a store? I don't know yet. I'm gonna have to sleep on this one. I'm gonna have to sleep on it because that's a lot of money and I really like it, but for something in that price range, I kind of have to absolutely love it. So it's gonna be a game time decision. You know what I mean? Day to day. Today, this Chateau de la Barre, number two, receives a score from me of 7.8, 7.8. It's a very, very good whiskey. What would push it into the great whiskey category? I'm not sure. Would a couple of extra proof points helped? Maybe, but you have to think about this. Sometimes people say that when distilleries add water to whiskey, it's because they're trying to make an extra buck, but if there's not a huge difference between 115 proof and 107 proof, they can just produce that many more bottles to make that many more people happy. And after the great success of Chateau de la Bau number one, maybe they just wanted to proof it down a bit more to spread out the fun. It is a very good finished bourbon and I'm going to be very tempted to buy a bottle if I see one. But if I don't buy a bottle, then I think that's okay too. My name is Matt, this is ADHD Whiskey, and like I always say, keep your head in the clouds, but your mind on knowing when and where to spend $160. Is it on a 90-minute deep tissue massage? Is it on a new cassette deck for your Ford Ranger? Is it to replace the lenses on the expensive sunglasses you bought your wife that she scratched up? Is it a down payment on the neutering of your dog? Is it on a mini refrigerator that you store worms in before you go fishing? Is it for a new downpipe on your 1991 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX? Is it a one-year subscription to your favorite adult website? Is it eight full-size sheet birthday cakes from the grocery store that you're hiding from your family in the garage that you eat every night? Is it a Wagyu steak? Or is it Bardstown Bourbon Company Chateau de la Pau? Hey, dirty, baby, I got your money, don't you worry. Say, hey, 
Baby, I got your money, got your money.